what up, what up? We're here at What's Your Grind Podcast with another episode. We got very special guests here. Um, I have the CEO and COO, two co-founders of So Icy, um, down here in ATL. How y'all doing, guys? Doing well, doing well, doing well. I appreciate yeah. you having us now. Yeah, no, I appreciate y'all making it down here yeah. and coming out. Um, so right here I have Donald, um, which is a Hampton graduate. Uh, CEO of So Icy, um, and then I have Osaze, who is a co-founder and COO of um, So Icy, um, again, which is located in Atlanta. Uh, so, like I said, thank you all for coming out um, here at What's Your Grind podcast. We always ask each guest, like, you know, what's your grind? Tell a little bit about yourself and kind of where you're from and stuff like that, and we'll kind of get into the rest of it a little later. Okay, yeah. You say? Okay. You said, what's my grind? What's your grind? So what do you do? What is so icy? Yeah. I mean, the the grind is just curate authenticity, I think. Mm -hmm. It's just, we we literally sat on the back porch, most of God. We came up with the idea and said, this is what we wanted to give Atlanta. Mm -hmm. This is how we want to do it. This is the vision. And this is the integral part of how we're going to get there. Okay. Oh, so I was like, you got anything to add to that? Or are we good? I mean, he pretty much hit all points, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it, being authentic as we can. Yeah. No, nah, that's wonderful. That's the that's the that's the real grind, I think. Yeah. You know, staying on the path of what you set out to do and not changing because other people wanted you to change. Mm -hmm. Right. Not trying to do it a different way because people are gonna be more receptive to this way and just finding those people that's gonna like your niche and like your authenticity. Not mm -hmm. everybody gonna like how you talk or what you do. So, yeah. So, so <laughs> ICE ATL, how did y'all get y'all start? I know you all started in the height of COVID, which is mm -hmm. big. Like you know, everywhere shut down. So, go and bring us back to what is that 2020, 2019, Whenever you all kind of like put the groundwork and tell me how you got started. So I, I'm gonna just say back in I want to say 2019, early 2020. Um, it was just a thought between me and Donald. I'm like, yo, let's start a business. Let's do something. You know, I'm going to bring what I bring to the table. You can bring your thoughts, whatever you bring to the table. Um, <clears throat> and then he called me one day with a proposal. Like, yo, I got an idea. Come over to the crib. Let's talk. He was like, so icy. I'm like, all right, break it down. He said, so I'm in Atlanta. I've been there for years. I've been seeing what, you know, what people need. Um, what's the want down there? Right. Um, how we can make a difference. He like cheese steaks, water ice, you know, something from up north, bring it down south, what they don't really got for real. Um, and then from there on, we just we just grind it. You know, got a got a food truck, start off with a food truck. Um, from there to a ghost kitchen and to where we are now. So all from a thought, from, from a conversation to a thought. Got everything written down, planned out, and we just went step by step, one by one, to get to where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and you guys are from the North, correct? Right. Yeah. So, so I'm, from, I'm, I'm from Philly. Okay. I'm from South Philly, 15th and Higgs, 23rd and Paris. Heard you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so He's from, he from Harrisburg, which is an hour, hour, maybe really an hour from Philly. Yeah. But I want to connect the dot on how we met. So my mm -hmm. mom moved to Harrisburg when I was younger. So I would go up there in the summer times, go to basketball camp. Mm -hmm. And we knew each other, like, since we was, you know, in childhood through camps. But we never really converse till we got older once we got older we started talking business you know how we want to make millions this and that and that conversation we were ping pong okay maybe real estate maybe mm -hmm. this maybe that right and then eventually you know the idea i'm down here i couldn't find no real water ice none i'm like dang i really want a piece of home but i can't get home because right. i'm doing this right and i'm like yo maybe we should just bring it down here and i couldn't find anything so i'm like this you know this can be our lane and it just it just grew because the first Two years, we wasn't doing cheesesteaks. We was just doing straight water ice. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of people, like, from Philly, they like, damn, bro, y'all got the water ice, but I can't find no cheesesteaks. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I like this spot, but it might be too salty. I like this spot. It's too bland. I'm like, well, we already took over with the water ice. We right. might do the cheesesteaks. So it just matriculated into that. And, um, yeah. Y'all like where y'all at yeah, now. That's yeah. what it is. And yeah. I think that's, you know, like, the best thing. Like, y'all not from here. And y'all brought a little piece of home, like Donald said, down here mm -hmm. and kind of like curated it into what it is today, which is, you know, y'all on the up and up. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of watched y'all from the beginning, from social media, and, you know, just want to, mm -hmm. I 
I don't think people get their flowers like they need mm. to. And I think what y'all are doing is really great, especially being black men down here in Atlanta, coming from a different state, so sure. and just yeah. putting on for home. Sure. Um, so I think that's great. Um, but kind of pivoting, you know, we know each other from Hampton. Mm. We just met, right. but mm. why food? Like, uh-huh. I never heard of Donald, you know, really I being a cook <laughs> or whatever like that, so... What? Why food? What yeah. made you jump into this industry? And uh, for you too, I suppose mm-hmm. Isaac, like yeah. you know, are you a cook? Like you, you jump in it too? Like well, well, to go off what you said, why food? Why not? You know, People right? Like to eat. I yeah, yeah it's a need. It's a need. <laughs> <laughs> sure, for sure. Where, wherever it's at, that's where it's gonna go. But um, I kind of got of a, uh, I kind of got a food background. So okay. Um, before I was born, my my granddad, my mom's dad had. Um, multiple businesses. He had two two restaurants, one corner store, and a laundromat. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it kind of it's, it's kind of in my bloodline. Then my mom eventually got her own restaurant in Harrisburg, PA. You know, she had that for um, I want to say six months to a year, um, and then you know. So we really a cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, so I've been in the mix. It makes sense now. Yeah, I've been, in the, mix yeah, I've been <laughs> in the mix for a while. Sweet you love, know. sweet love to cook. Yeah, you know, I do. Yeah, not really <laughs> knowing where it was going to take me. So yeah. I'm, I'm just in the I'm in the kitchen with my mom. Like, yo, why you got me? You know. But when I when I get back in my groove, it's like, all right, it makes sense now. I'm comfortable. I'm yeah. comfortable. I, I, yeah. I, I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, I love it. I don't really got no complaints about nothing because I come from that. So right. Yeah. I think that's the jump back into authenticity. Like we both from up north. I've been making cheese steaks on a on a griddle, whether that was with steakums and white sliced bread to mm-hmm. whatever. Okay. You know, scooping water. Like it's what we do in Philly is what we do up north. Like the same thing with, you know, with the cheese steaks, it's really a tri state. Like Philly, you know what I'm saying? We got it popping, but you still got Delaware, you still got Jersey. You still got Harrisburg, mm-hmm. uh, Baltimore, you know, people that, you know, subscribe to that up north culture. I, I say right. New York might be a little too farther up, but they kind of like a tie and ice too. But, yeah. you know, so when it came to food and it came to what we were doing, it, it, it just was like, you know, you know how you get like just intuition. Like you just see stuff like, man, okay. And you just got to take the risk. You got to try yeah. something new. And like, I think if it was in any other city, I wouldn't do it. Right. Mm-hmm. But since I saw Atlanta and I saw what Atlanta did for other people that were authentic, Makes you know, sense. I saw what it did for a pinky. I saw what it did right. for, you know, whoever else. I'm like, okay, if we authentically do something. We do it with our, our whole heart, passionately. The, the city going to reward you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. And once you live in Atlanta, we we going everywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's really only up from here, bro. Yeah. Nah, I heard that. And when you set us up from here, I mean... You guys started with, like you said, the food truck with the water ice. Mm -hmm. Then y'all went to, you know, the crab fries, Mm -hmm. the pretzel bites. And then you kind of gravitated towards the Mm cheesesteaks. So kind of what went into that planning where you kind of started off, which was probably like somewhere more comfortable, and Mm -hmm. then just kind of continue to build your brand? So like with the water ice, that was like the, it was kind of like easy because... Mm -hmm. It's summertime. You know, we know we're going to get it off in the spring and summertime. You know, mm-hmm. we'll be able to sell high volume. But kind of like as you're growing in the business and we were looking at the numbers, like we were hitting good revenue, mm-hmm. but people constantly asking about cheese steaks and this and that. And then also uh, with the food truck stuff, like which is very um, character building was like the weather was a big play. Mm-hmm. You know, the legislation in the city as far as parking and permitting was a big play. Mm-hmm. Right. So at first, when we first started, we're like, man, yeah, we're going to scale it with food trucks. We're not going to have to deal with no leases with anybody, right. different mm-hmm. stuff like that. We're going to be all around the city. And like, when you get in it, you're like, <laughs> damn, like, bro. Nah. Where's the hit? Like, we like, we got to pivot. We got to do something. Yeah. yeah. So you just, you just got to pivot into something else. But like, the cheese steaks was already in our lane. I was just kind of like, Honestly, we were both kind of like, uh, you know, we could stick with the water ice, but people just kept asking, like, okay, well, and I don't really want to deal with the food truck anymore mm-hmm. uh, to the point of parking daily and different things like mm-hmm. that. So that's what kind of – we, we kind of just grew into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, with anything, like even with the ghost kitchen uh, concept and what we're doing with that and how we're going to scale that, we kind of – you know, you learn as you go. Like we, mm-hmm. we knew nothing of the industry, like far as the business-wise, the – the profit margins, different things like that. So as you learn more, it's like, okay, 
we're going to have to sell a thousand cheese steaks versus maybe 500 uh, board ices or whatever to mm-hmm. get our money. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so. Yeah. So can you explain to everybody <laughs> if they don't know? I didn't know until recently doing research, but explain what a ghost kitchen is and what that entails. Um, so a ghost kitchen is sort of like a restaurant, but it's just not a sit in type of type of situation. Um, you mainly got a kitchen that you cook out of. You can still get the same amount of customers at the restaurant would. Like I said, they just can't sit in, so they order online mm-hmm. or they can come to the location. We got a kiosk in the front, you can order there. And we make your food, you know, ready to order, make it to order, excuse me, send it out and it's you know, that's so everything's how it is. virtual. Everything's virtual. Yeah. Yep, okay, so you're locker. not dealing with <clears throat> and they don't never Occasionally we do. You know, okay. some customers might call, yo, can I can I see one of y'all? You know, you know, they will go up. They can go, yo, I like what y'all are doing. This is right. what it is. I'm from up north. You know, they'll they, they talk, they talk. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll connect that way. But, you know, it's, it's very rare. It's very <laughs> rare that uh, that we see customers, you know, because yeah. we Got get you. so many orders. We're trying to get them out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we get it, we were, though, low key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would get it like we were, you know, we'll be up, like we want to walk it up there right. and chop yeah. it up. Right. That just that fun. Got so uh, nah, but then, But then also, at our first ghost kitchen, it wasn't as virtual as this one we are mm-hmm. at that we're at that now. So, so you church. had yeah, one yeah, that was like a church. So, yeah. 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 So so the, yeah. the first ghost kitchen, we actually did have to go meet every customer. Okay. You know what I mean? So when they call, we really take their food out to them, mm-hmm. meet them, you know, converse or whatever the case may be. But Probably. that that was a crazy Taking too much time. Yeah. We had three parking lots, bro. Korean man. Listen. Uh, crazy. Owned, owned the church. And we weren't really even supposed to be in there. Like mm-hmm. we were subleasing. Under you know a dude that tried to play us, right? You know what I mean. But we would take it out. It was three parking lots: a mechanic, uh, mechanic dude, mechanic shop. You had a fabric yeah. store, and you had the then church. Yeah, then it was us in the middle. But it's food trucks coming out the back, in and out, trying to load up, mm-hmm. and people like you know Atlanta folks, man. Our Atlanta, yeah, listen, our Atlanta yeah. folks, they packing, they blocking packing, food they don't, trucks. They don't so care. yeah, they we getting going. cussed out like, yo, the food trucks can't get through. You know, like. Y'all going constantly, yo, can y'all, yeah. can y'all park down there for me, please? It'll be yeah, out in a like, couple minutes. Just give us a minute. Walk yeah, all the way down. Out. Yeah. But the crazy thing is how we got into the new ghost, the ghost kitchen that we're at. The lady was a customer. She worked for the ghost kitchen that we're at. Okay. So she saw how busy it was. She like, yo, like, y'all, <laughs> y'all might want to come see me. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I gotta take right. this elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. Sure. You, y'all like ten fifteen. So now the ghost kitchen that we're at is actually built for to us. serve us. You know. Right. And um, so that's that's the cool part. But the ch- we need the church though, mm-hmm. because it taught us customer service yeah. and like taking on phone calls and people cussing out like, man, I've been waiting for an hour. Like, yo, bro, we got a two foot griddle. Listen, the <laughs> griddle about this <laughs> size. It's good food, not fast food. Yeah, hey, that's, that's that's okay, a word. Sure. That, yeah. That's what I cook. Shout out yeah. to oh, shout out to Otis. Our, man. our cook. That's that's his saying. Like he be, uh-huh. he from North. He from Harry mm-hmm. Ave. You're like, bro, I'm making the cheese steak right, gang. Either they're going to get the cheese steak good and they're going to be mad that they got it late and they right. you know they still going to be happy. Exactly. Right. But I'm not going to rush the cheese steak. And we we kind of took that from him. Like, we had the, I think the biggest thing is being a leader, you got to be the biggest follower. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to those that you're working with. Like, this our cook. This the dude that made the majority of the cheese steaks. You know right. what I'm saying? If he's saying, yo, this is the place I'm going to do it that we can get this quality. Right. Let's follow that lead. And let's, right. n- let's now build the language and the brand around it. Like, yo. Not fast food, good food. If mm-hmm. you don't want to wait, that's cool. Right. Mm-hmm. But you know, quality over quantity. Yeah, heard that. Absolutely. So switching gears a little bit, um, getting into the business and creating a business and a brand. How did you kind of go about getting the LLC, getting funding? Tell us a little bit how you did that. Well, LLC easy. That's only yeah. like a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> LLC easy, what fifteen? But I mean. We we were all money in. I mean, Sweet took money from his four hundred one k. I took money from my four hundred one k. Took mm-hmm. some loans out. Took some loans working, out. You know, saving every penny. Yeah, because I into the business. It was mm-hmm. time. I think. I think it was yeah. Because we it it kind of took long because we were waiting for money like to come in like. We'll get this stuff like, damn, all right, we need another 3000 Like, right, where does right, 3000 right. going to come? Right. Work. I'm doing overtime. Yeah, then another three you know? come. Okay, we can finish this. All, all right. right. And it just got like that. But it was, we didn't have, we didn't have no, we didn't have a lot of, re- like, we used, we used what we had. And honestly, we even overspent on our food truck. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we ain't know. We trusted, we trusted people like, you know, they like, yo, we going to do the job. Me and him, we, 
We going to give you the money. Like, right, you, you right. know what I'm saying? We like, all right, here you go. We pay you up front. Right. They like, oh. It was a situation where we, we got, because we actually got our food truck um, built in PA. Okay. But the way the, the way food trucks are built in PA is a little different than Georgia. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we spent all this money getting it built in PA from what, you know, I had a couple friends that have food trucks in PA. I'm like, yo, how we do this? How we do this? How this supposed to go? And they telling us based on that PA, you know, um, regulations. Yeah, right. So when we get down to Georgia, Don like, yo, we gotta get this changed. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, nah. But it's bro. so it's so dope because well, we needed because we didn't even it it would have been just as simple as calling Atlanta Health Inspection. People would be like, yo, what do we need yeah. on there? You dig what I'm right. saying? Exactly. But we were we just we just trying to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> like we had a little like okay so and if, when you cooking food you gotta have a a certain type of hood yeah you gotta have a commercial a hood. commercial hood mm -hmm. we went and got like a <laughs> kitchen hood like for a house I'm like so we like yeah we ready to go we gotta get this door down here. Don like yeah but this ain't gonna work man. teaching times <laughs> man you needed that I'm time like, you needed bro, that there's no way I just spent all this right. money. So we, we spent this money to get this done to find out that we got to spend more money to get it done get it the right way. Yeah, I'm so like, what y'all do with uh, the hood? Threw it away. <laughs> then we got another hey. hood. Dude played this. It wasn't, but, you know, we needed all that. Like, that's the one thing, like, partnership, like, having somebody you can, like, depend on, like, be like, yo, this is what we need. This is, this is the process. And, like, you have somebody that holds you accountable. That's the beautiful thing, like mm -hmm. partnership. Because if you had all that showing, if I I wanted to quit every, I'd be like, yeah. sweet, sweet, yeah, <laughs> sweet, leave me alone for a day. I'm like, bro, yeah. like I'm ready, I'm ready to be done. Mm -hmm. But like, if he wasn't there, like, bro, just keep on pushing. Listen, bro, it's, it's a it's, it's a marathon. We're not right. rushing for nothing. It's right, come. You know what I'm saying we good. We just learning right now. Yeah, so it's going to seem everything that we doing is going to seem hard because we don't know, and that's what learning anything. If you don't know something, it's going to seem hard at first. But once you Get everything in line, and you know, do your research and figure everything out. It's a cakewalk. It's too right. easy now. Yeah, yeah. It's light work. Twenty twenty four. Like they're gonna see how it's that, that, that Meek and Rick said too yeah, easy, right? Yeah, too easy. Yeah, I think yeah. Too easy. That sounds about right. Circling back, <laughs> I know you said LLC was like the one of the easiest parts mm. of the business, but mm. for someone that is starting their food truck, they start from scratch. Yeah. They don't really know what kind of. What, I mean, would you? Where'd you get it from? Mm. You know, it, I know it's an easy process, but try to yeah, yeah, yeah. explain it a little bit. For sure. Can I? Yeah, can I explain? Okay. So, you know, you can Google LLC. You get the LLC. That's 115. I, I think the EIN should be free. Uh, you mm -hmm. go to statega.gov uh, website. You get the free EIN now. With the food trailer, what we did was we got a used food trailer from off of Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. We got it for about 2500 Drove to Maryland uh, to go pick it up. So... Um, There's a story behind that too. <laughs> What's the story? Man? Go ahead, tell us. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> no, he had to walk to the yeah, gas. Yeah, I had to like walk, and the police, the police uh, dude came pick me up, bro. I was so, you know, we don't, the yeah. police, you know, I'm a little scared. Yeah. So <laughs> I walk in the rain. Did I have that? No, maybe bro, not. You, you t-shirt hat. That was it. Yeah. So I'm walking yes. around. He like, yo, you good? You need a ride? So, but yeah, that was a whole story. But you know, you you get that food trailer, and what mm -hmm. we did, the reason why we went the food trailer versus food truck is because of capital. So a lot of people try to get a food truck, and what's going to happen is you're going to have to get a used food truck. Therefore, right. it's going to be like maybe engine issues, different things like that mm -hmm. that's going to come into play. Like it was a dude uh, that was at our commissary one time. He got a food truck that was used. The first month his engine broke down, he had to spend like ten grand on a new mm -hmm. engine. Jeez. So we so we got a food trailer, and then we got a pickup truck, a Dodge Ram, to hitch the trailer to. Back. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you get the trailer. And then uh, we had my uncle uh, build it out, but it's super easy. You lay down silver silver plate walls, you know, silver plate floors, but it's all dependent on your city legislation. So mm -hmm. Houston okay. might be different than Atlanta, right. et cetera. So certain things might be, like, you can have a residential vent in PA. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be good in Atlanta. Nope. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So call the health, you know, permit people, talk to them, see what you need. Right. Uh, I think the biggest thing, if you're trying to get a food truck, is find a commissary before you start your build out. Right. You want to say why? Wow, <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, I'm going to let you talk. Go no, ahead. because we needed a, we we were having a, like, when when we finally saved up all this money, like mm -hmm. we finally getting it and it's done, 
Couldn't find a commissary. Couldn't find a commissary. So we sitting there some more like, damn, bro, like we you can't operate without commissary right. in Atlanta. Mm. I think it's a little different in Philly, um, but you can't do it. So, you know, eventually we were able to find a commissary, uh, a jinky one, but it got us through. You know? um, it did the job. It did yeah, the it job. did the job. <laughs> but I That's think, the, matters right I think the main thing, though, I think the thing that helped me out was uh, – I had worked for somebody else's food truck because I had no experience. Okay. So I had, you know, helped. I think it's called like Little Bites or something like that. They got a restaurant in Kennesaw now. But, you know, I was like, don't pay me. I just want to ask questions. Right. Like, I just want to, you know, how do you pay your people? You know, what PO? Because I knew nothing about POS systems. The business. The, the business structure. The information. Was yeah. The whole point when, yeah. when you did that. Yeah. So. That was one of the things that really helped me is like, I mean, y'all can DM me and ask me in sweet and right. ask us any questions. Like, we're gonna get y'all game because you gotta execute on it. Exactly. That's the that's the only difference is if like we didn't know we didn't have no real business plan or no mm -hmm. real this and that. You dig what I'm saying? Like I did what I learned in journalism one on one with Butler. You know <laughs> right. right. Real rap. Right. right. That's my that's my guy. So the marketing side, like how we market, <clears throat> that's all, all I'm doing is when I watch that Mary J. Blige video, she in McDonald's is something that he broke down to me. Mm -hmm. I'm using that same template now. And, you know, I think we almost had 40K on Instagram and we yeah. like 53 yeah. on TikTok, which yeah. is like, you know. That's good. Yeah, it's that's big cool. time. Yeah, that's cool. Sure. It's big time. That's cool. So starting a new business, Donald, I know you have a family. Um, and uh, Osaze, you, do you have yeah. a family as well? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so managing... Family and this new business. How did y'all go about that? Mm. Tell us a little bit about that. I know it's some trials and tribulations. It's hard. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much break it down like, if I don't do this, you know, we not gonna have this, you know. And, and nobody in my family, in my household, gets in the in the way of you know business. Mm -hmm. um, they pretty much respect what I got going on. And it, it really ain't no, it's, it's no, it's no questions about anything. So it's, it's pretty much balanced. It's balanced. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You said, you said, how do you balance it? Mm -hmm. How'd you manage it? How do yeah. you manage it? Business and family, making that balance. I don't, I mean, you know my, you know my wife, so, I mean, we're athletes and we obsessive people, so she understands how I am. So she allowed me to be like obsessive and mm -hmm. living like, you know, because we're still young. I got a one year old. So, you know, he run us havoc and, you know, <laughs> uh, my nephew about to be one. And then he got mm -hmm. Kim and he got uh, mamas. Mm -hmm. You think I'm saying we meet up on Sunday and we might have a business meeting downstairs and they would, you know, the, the family is upstairs and yeah. we'll come up. But for the most part, during the week, we locked in. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like they know like if somebody call us and we need to go in at any time. We locked in, and it's just a vision, and you know they see they see what type of hustlers we is, mm -hmm. and you know we still young, so we trying we trying to get to you know a place of of, of balance, but I think you got to be extreme to get the balance. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? They're, so they're, they're sacrificing with us, I right? Say. They, they exactly. Sacrificing sacrificing with us. So yeah. how important would you say is yeah. to have that partner that knows like you very, know we get into the bag right now? Seriously. You know what I mean? Like so important. Yeah, like, it's it's really no discussion. Like if Donald. If he's at the kitchen, he gotta go. You know, you know. I, everybody likes their off days just to, just to fall back and chill with mm -hmm. the family. But if he called me, yo, sweet, I gotta, I gotta run out. I need you to come in. I'm out. That's sweet, be it. trying to work even when he don't. I'm like, yeah. go. <laughs> go, go. Like, bro, <laughs> the ship be over. He's still talking. I'm like, bro, you gotta go, bro. Like, go to yeah. your family game. You've been here yeah. ten hours. Like, right. Yeah. He just having a, like, but he like, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, you gotta. I think is. The reason why this partnership work out is because we have good spouses that we work well with too. Yeah. So we over communicate like we. I'd say it's like, bro, it's like we married at this point. You know what I'm yeah. saying like we gotta over communicate mm -hmm. on every single thing, and um, you know, we we're getting it like we friends, but business and friends sometimes you gotta get to know each other. How somebody like act business wise. Exactly. Right? It's, you know way it's, it's way different. It's way different. It's you know what different. <laughs> So, like, that was the whole conversation. When we started, like, bro, you my bro, but this business, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this is how business go. This mm -hmm. is, Do you want to do it with me? Mm -hmm. You know, this is... Yeah. yeah. But 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 what but what kind of uh, eliminates all conflict between friendship and business is communication. Facts. We communicate so much that it's never an issue. Right. 
you know, and, and in business, you got to be able to put feelings to the side mm -hmm. when it comes to anything. You know, you got to take your feelings out of the situation, look at it from a business standpoint. And it's, it's never going to be no, no conflict between and, me and Donald. And what you said about that, that's the same thing with, like, for me, family. Like, that's what I tell my wife is like, yo, would you right now, 28, you 28, you know what I'm saying? We got a one-year-old. Would you rather me work my ass off right now for these two years my son ain't gonna really, he don't really, you know what I'm saying? He don't want me to hold him. I need me a daughter because he don't want me to hold him. <laughs> he don't want me to even hold him. He want to run and scream. So <laughs> he not paying attention if I'm there or not. You dig what I'm saying? And you going, you know what I'm saying? You going to get me the quality of me for a short amount of, but you, you know, is a quote, would you rather a rich man that's busy or a poor man that's always there? Mm -hmm. you dig mm -hmm. on, I, I hope you'll pick the first one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm going to be right. there. So, you know, I'm going to be there. Yeah, yeah. But right now, we, we, we in hustle mode. Grinding. So they know. Grinding. Yeah, FaceTime if you want to see me. And they, and they in hustle <laughs> mode, too. Yeah, Tell, sure, you know, Malia, sure. Malia came up with the crab fries. So, you know. Uh -huh. so she, Look at my you know, girl. So she say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Give I, her a credit. We, we Give perfect. her her credit. I just, I just said it on camera. <laughs> but, you know, we we all, like, they we about to do merch. They going to, you know. Mm -hmm. Be a part of that merch and different. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a family business. You know what I'm saying? We trying yeah. to be like Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Love that. When did y'all know So Icy would be a success? Well, I knew I knew when, when he told me, honestly. Just from the need? Just from the need. Just mm -hmm. from the need and, 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 and the, uh, the want. When he told me, you know, he was hype about it. Yeah. So I had no other choice but to fall in line like, yo, this is going to be something. When, then when, when I really started thinking, um, I'm like, yeah, he, he was right. And when I came down here, it was a different story. I'm actually seeing what he was talking about. You know, so it, it all made sense once I came down. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, the first time, I mean, no idea is a bad idea to me. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Just got to it's, it's like when you're in the court, I don't see a bad shot. Right. I'm going to take that. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't see a, I don't see a bad shot. That's a different you know conversation. I don't see a bad shot. Every time. But no, yeah, I I think if you don't like, it's a, you, you go through the, you go through like, the stages of like you so excited because you so delusional. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like you don't know the work that is about to you take. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Right. So right. you just like, but I think that's the biggest thing that you need to like is have that like, yo, we're gonna be successful. And then you know, when we're in it, of course, I'm like, uh, I'm like, we're gonna be successful, but it might take a little longer. Then mm -hmm. I'm going for I'm like, okay, we're gonna be successful, but we need to fix this. Mm -hmm. And then as you constantly grow, it's like, okay. We gonna be successful because now we know the game mm -hmm. and we know how to play. Mm -hmm. Right, and it don't matter how long it take now because if I gotta move this piece just one step forward, you dig what I'm saying? Eventually, I'm gonna get the hundred steps that I need. Mm -hmm. Right, you dig? So now it's like it's just there's no denying it. Right, mm -hmm. there's no it's just you know when when the universe going line for it, you know. Yeah, but it's we are successful. I mean, we do this yeah. shit full time. Time. You know, we, we love what we do. We put our heart in it. So that, that success is if you wake up with excitement and um, you're trying to get better every single day. So, mm -hmm. And people, I mean, people be recognizing us and stuff, too. So, I mean, I think we get getting yeah, there. We, 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 we there for real. No, nah, for there. sure. And I think. Check in here, yeah. Well, we there for real. <laughs> <laughs> right, check in <laughs> here. Yeah. We there for real. We there for real. The check in. Cool. I'll wait for tax season. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I right. think the sky's the limit for sure for y'all. Yeah. Um, and I think we, you guys hit on it earlier, but the social media, mm -hmm. like y'all at 39, 40K, mm -hmm. um, and then TikTok, you know, mm -hmm. another whatever thousand followers on there. How important is social media for y'all and to the business? Very important. <laughs> that, 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 that's what it is. That, that's what it right. is. Right. Social media is gonna get you, you know, mm -hmm. to yeah. where you want to be. Because at at this point in time, uh, everybody's on social media, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how you reach the most people on social media. Yeah. And Donald, Donald is a, he's a marketing genius, so I pretty much let him I'm do what he do. Nah, it's cap. I'm and that's and that's kind of what I, like watching y'all stuff. I'm yeah. like, I love this. Yeah. Like the content. It's yeah. it's about the content, man. Yeah. Like if you can engage people yeah. and have them coming back for more and wondering, yeah. you know, all that. So yeah. what what's your background? No, we we're both communication majors. Yeah. I don't I ain't got it like that. Like yeah. <laughs> I think where know. did you learn that in? Not just posting, just watching YouTube. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, watching YouTube, YouTube University and just uh just seeing what other people post. Like and just being curious. But I think I always, because I, you know, once I graduated college, I was doing videography, 
And then I got down here and I was uh, doing video production. I did, you know, lighting and grit work and a little bit of GE stuff. So I was kind of already like doing videography for brands and stuff mm -hmm. and kind of posting their content mm -hmm. and kind of trying to help them grow their brand. So I just kind of took the same thing. And then, you know, you just learn different stuff. Like you like, okay, you know, with TikTok, you got to use a certain sound or people might like a certain angle of this food and how it looks. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? People like, uh, food porn, how you how you call it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So create something that's so like people are like man, I I want to eat this joint through my phone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? exactly. Like, create right. something that's exactly. gonna pop like that. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. But <clears throat> the reason why I'm excited is because we have no marketing dollars. Like I, I pay for no paid promotion, mm -hmm. nothing. So we be talking. About, I be like, bro, I got like a hundred commercials I can shoot that I want to shoot mm -hmm. that we're going to shoot. But you know, but with social media, it's just about pinning it on there. People comment and get an engagement, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, right now we've been posting three times, three times a day, and just trying to grow because uh, we realize for every one person that know it's ten thousand that don't. Exactly, you dig. So even though we got thirty eight, you know, and then we got fifty three on TikTok, that ain't that's like three percent of Atlanta. You dig? Like, we want to be. Word. You know what I'm right, saying? We right. want to be everywhere we go. Like that's how that's how big we want to go. So like we about to scale it up even even greater. So you mm -hmm. know. And we about to really get in the trenches. You know what I'm saying we about to go in neighborhoods and pass out right. flyers. Like we about to go, groundwork. you know, groundwork. You know, yeah. guerrilla marketing. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that's what uh, if you're a business in this in this economy right now, and you know everything is going to slow down. You dig what I'm saying? But I think one of the things we talk about is people going to get what they want. People want to spend their money on what they want, but you got to make them want it for mm -hmm. sure. You did mm -hmm. for sure. So I know you say y'all about to hit the ground running with the door to door stuff, mm -hmm. building clientele. You guys are tapping into local colleges, mm -hmm. serving Amazon, um, serving people like Zaytoven, like, mm -hmm. you know, just crazy stuff that people are looking at your social media. I know mm -hmm. I am. I'm like, dang, how they, yeah. you know, how they do that. <clears throat> so right. what went into the process of building clientele is getting those local, local colleges and everything like that? Um, from my point of view, I'm, I'm going to say consistency in posting, consistency in content. For the most part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really it. I mean, because all that stuff kind of just came organically, like, you know, from from God, I would say. Like, with Zaytoven, the dude, uh, his name, Big Trill, that's his partner. Um, he saw our stff on social media, followed us. Uh, I DM'd him, like, yo, you got to come try cheese. They, he tried it, did a mm -hmm. review. He like, yo, you know, uh, I'll be back in a week. You know, Zay told my partner, that I'm like, all right, you know, cool. I told <laughs> so I'm like, man, you know, we didn't got, you know, Atlanta folks didn't cap this like celebrity. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. We got a lot of celebrities <laughs> that come crazy. that don't get posted, you know what I'm saying? Like, they cap, like, yeah. yeah. So he actually hit me like, yo, come through the studio, bring a cheesesteak. And, you know, at first I'm sitting there, I'm like, I wasn't even going to do a video because I'm like, bro, I'm not about to ask nobody for no review. Like, right. especially in the studio, you know, it's 50 people in there. I'm like, bro. So they getting a the cheese that he like, yo, go go get a video. I'm like, yo, Zay, can I get a video? He's like, of course, come on, come on. So I hey. told him the story, and that's how uh -huh. we did it. Same thing with Amazon. Uh, lady reached out for it. She's like, man, she was trying to message me on TikTok. She messaged me like five times on TikTok. Wow. Didn't see it. So then she finally messaged me on Instagram. She's like, yo, I'm trying to get you, you know, come out to my job. And uh, I forgot we was busy. So I'm like, uh, I don't really know. She's like, oh, it's Amazon. I said, yeah, I think I, we can free up some space for <laughs> right. I think we can slide yeah, that. I think, I think we can work. Yeah. Like, like, I got like 5,000 yeah. people. I said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, uh, we'll make some shit yeah, for you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Right. But it's, it's all those, it's, it's people, it's, it's people that place, I, when people say they self-made, I don't believe them. Mm -hmm. It's so many people that play an intricate role in your success. Like, how we got into colleges are, you know, my one friend, Teller, uh, she came to the truck, she tried it, and she worked for Clark, she worked for Kennesaw, mm -hmm. and as she moved to different colleges, she like, uh, yeah, I got a vendor, because they all need food vendors. Right, So she exactly. like, I got a vendor that I used to use out Kennesaw, okay, now come to Clark, now, okay, now come. Right. And that's mm -hmm. all it is. That's all it is, is connections and being authentic. You just be mm -hmm. authentic, it's going to come. Being able to execute. Yeah, once you get in those positions too. Exactly. Facts. Yeah, that's a fact. Because it yeah. it'll be a shame that right. you know you guys <laughs> right. not ready for the right. moment. You yeah. know, right. and that, and all the stuff that y'all spoke about in the beginning, like having people, yeah. you know, not living up to what they said they was going to do. Yeah. You know, with the hood and everything like that, driving yeah. to Merlin, being in the rain. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that mm -hmm. is, you know. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's helping y'all step into y'all moment mm-hmm. when the time is right mm-hmm. because y'all not there yet. Mm-hmm. Like y'all somewhere, like y'all big time. But I mean, like I said before, sky's the limit for y'all. Sure. Like I just see y'all sure. just blowing up. I not only the, Atlanta. I think this is the catalyst though. That's why I'm appreciative of you. Because we've been trying to get on the camera, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. We've been trying to pop our shit. As you should. We've been trying to pop our shit. They didn't want to pit us on the camera. Listen, gonna, listen, we gonna, listen we, we, we young and we, you know what I'm saying? We not we following no... Uh, let me tell you, when we got in our ghost kitchen, right? How the ghost kitchen go, is they got the robots, you put the food on the robots, you know what I'm saying? They send it out to the locker. Like I said, in the beginning, we up in the front. We politicking, we mm-hmm. shaking hands, mm-hmm. we taking pictures, we doing... So the dude, uh, Daryl, shout out to Daryl. Yeah, shout out to Daryl, uh, He like, yo, you know, maybe I should package, get your orders out quicker. We like, nah, we just going, you know, we, we had to make a few chances because we did get, like, super backed up. Right. Like, people mm-hmm. were, like, two hour away. Yeah, almost, people, like... but it was because, um, I think the Food Stalker, the dude you told, Food Stalker had maybe did a review, mm-hmm. and it just went crazy. Shout mm-hmm. out to Food Stalker. Mm-hmm. That's my guy. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, but we were up there just politicking, and we had to break the system. You know what I'm saying? And now, now it's, you know, a few people that's trying to follow that mold within, you know, how we curate that system of ghost kitchen. Mm. Cause it's it's supposed to, you're not supposed to see the owners or exactly. the people behind right. there. Exactly. But we got our brand, you know what I'm saying? Like people want to see and talk to us and be like, yo, you know, I talked to somebody from Westlife, why you don't put no mustard on your cheese? Day? I'm like, well, you old, you know, the old school right, Westlife. Right, right. <laughs> they put mustard, we talk them out, and they that's what make them feel good. Mm. Right. You dig? Like that's when like when you eat a cheese steak after having a great conversation. I think it make it taste a little right. better because you connect it to us now. You yeah, connection, so connection for sure. Nah, I definitely and you know being on y'all social media, the connection from personal calls mm-hmm. to like you said, like going out there and politicking. I, that's the type of experience mm-hmm. you want to get with mm-hmm. when you spending your money. Mm-hmm. For sure. You know what I mean? Right. Where do y'all see so icy in the next five years without telling your secrets and mm-hmm. you know? This, that, and the third. Where do y'all see it growing? Is it Atlanta based still? Y'all taking that job back to Philly? Like, how does that look for you? If you could, you know, speak on that. Multiple locations in Atlanta, right? Yeah, for sure. We, right. we definitely want to um, take over where we started, mm-hmm. um, and then eventually venture out. You know, take it back home, maybe. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah. No, nah, I think that was a good. Sure. So like yeah, you know, yeah, multiple yeah, yeah, yeah. multiple it's, spots is definitely right, like I think right, that's like right. you know next next right. job. Like because people don't want to travel, you know, yeah. to every every spot we might have. So if we can bring one closer mm-hmm. to where y'all at, still in the state of Georgia, then that'd be that'd be cool. Sweet, don't be humble though, bro. That's all I'm saying. I thought like you were trying to be humble. Go ahead, Donna. Go, 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 go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Like, hey, we Come on, on gang. Like, you know what we doing, bro? We gonna get a Billy, man. Billy. I think. Nah, I say. I say half. I'd be realistic and be half a half a bill. Half a bill, because it's yeah. it's it's really now. Now it's just about execution and mm-hmm. the, the strategy is already there. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Like you just no got replicated. Yeah, you just got to replicate it. Like once you get the you know once you get your systems in place, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying you start delegating more. You know you start looking right. at food and inventory, how to cut costs and mm-hmm. different things like that. That's when the game get fun because like how we thinking of it now is like real estate, honestly. You know what I'm saying? Because you getting these different pieces because Atlanta is so big. So we in Decatur, but Midtown, without traffic, maybe 20, but with traffic, which is maybe all day in Atlanta, it's 40 right. minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. So even though it's 10 miles apart, 10 miles in Atlanta be like 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. So you can get that Midtown. You dig what I'm saying? Then you got to show love to the South Side. You got to hit Jonesboro, Riverdale. Mm-hmm. So within Atlanta, I think we want to we wanna take over Atlanta and uh, become synonymous um, in the streets of Atlanta, like when you come to Atlanta, it's only you only think so icy. You don't right. have nobody else. Right. right. When you do that, that's my we, first stop. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> you know I come here, I gotta first go there. I gotta go so, there first. Yep. So when you do that, when you conquer your territory, then you can. You know what I'm saying, but people be trying to venture out because they ain't really locked. They they not really locked into what they need to do right here. Mm-hmm. You dig? Like I was telling Sweet this morning, like before we came to the podcast, I drove around to a couple apartment complexes that we didn't. <clears throat> tap into you. Yeah, I'm like, bro, we need to take care of the neighborhood before we really move mm-hmm. out of this genre. Mm-hmm. Cause Cause they right talk, there. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about expanding, but we get a lot of people that commute, you know, right. 30, 40 minutes away, but our neighbors don't know us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, we need to tap into them. Right. You dig? So we need to take over Atlanta before we think of anything else. Right. Um, but Philly definitely in a mix. PA, Harrisburg is definitely in a mix. Mm-hmm. Um, because we, I mean, I, I, I'm cool with going back to Philly because, you know, people getting 
kind of cool with the traditional cheesesteaks, they're not really taking to another level. So mm -hmm. I think we can still make a difference in Philly too, especially since I'm, you know we from there. So right, um, they already they already want us there. So we I'm about to say yeah, we gonna get up there. <laughs> when we had the food truck, yo. Y'all bring the food truck down. I got an event yeah, to come bro. to. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's eight hours, guys. Yeah. 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 Like, drop yeah. no yeah. food truck, no eight yeah. hours, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, are yeah. you crazy? Yeah, man. <laughs> what would you, if you had a mentee or something like that, someone that's trying to crack the game and get in, what would you tell them, you know, about, like, obviously we talked about your adverse times <laughs> and, you know, challenges. What, what kind of advice would you give somebody that's trying to get into the game? Don't hesitate. Um, just don't hesitate. That's pretty much it. Just mm -hmm. go all in. Once you think of it, just do it. If you hesitate, that's when you're going to start getting these thoughts like, should I do it? Should I not do it? And then, you know, it's, you, you might get a little weary about the situation and not do it when you really should just went all in from the from, from the jump when you thought of it. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. And you said a mentee that's trying to get into the food industry, right? That's trying yeah, because I'm sure yeah. people going to watch this like, man, I, yeah. I want to be like these guys. I yeah. want to see how I could crack yeah. crack the code. Well, our cook, Nick, he actually is one of our mentees like that we're mm -hmm. teaching the business to. Like, he reached out. A couple, he was kind of annoying me, like, bro, I want to come work for you. I want to come work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a spot open. And um, I forgot what his degree was. I'm like, bro, why? And I kept, I pressed it. I'm like, bro, why do you want to be in the food industry? Like, right. you got, like, a degree where you can make 60. Like, bro, I just want to cook. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, you can come make some cheesesteaks. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> you, you can you can ask the questions you want to ask, you know, about bit. He asks us a hundred questions while he cook. He's like, day, bro. Like, he like, he like, how much was this? You know, and, and we yeah. break it down to him as, as we learn, because we still learn. We still mm -hmm. got mentors that, you know, we talk to and learn a game from. But I think if if you trying to learn a game, like I said, work for somebody for free. That's mm -hmm. what I did. You gonna ask? You can ask all the questions. If, if somebody work for me for free, bro, you can ask me questions. All day. <laughs> you can ask me questions all, all day, day. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But people, you know, even if it's two, three, four hours a day, you know what I'm saying the the time that you would probably go watch TV or go out, go work for free and get and get the questions, build it up, learn off somebody else's failure. It's gonna. Mm -hmm. Cause we we were learning, cause nobody would like we tried to do it, but you know I had a couple, you know a couple people, but in the food industry they kind of, it's kind of like they give you like, they don't give you the full answer exactly, cause you kind of got to earn your stripe. You right, know what I'm saying like you right. ask, Try gatekeep it a little yeah, bit, like, right. like that's what I don't like. So like when somebody asks me a question, like people call us, we give them real game yeah. about the ghost kitchen, like. Cause no I, yeah, yeah, you know, but no us learning, it was like they was trying to keep secret. Like they'll tell us half the, the answer. We do it like okay, and they be like, yeah, did you figure it out? I'm like, no. <laughs> like, give me the I answer. Guess I, 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 I guess I will. I guess I will. I don't got no choice but. but yeah, we, bro. When we made a decision, bro. When like we like we just got and I'm like, bro, you know what, bro? F all these dudes, bro. Mm -hmm. Like we just going. We it is. I'm not asking nobody no questions. We we're gonna, gonna learn as we go. Yeah, we're gonna figure it out, and you know that's how I, that's, that's how, how I went. went. But learn from somebody else's failures. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. go work for somebody. Yeah. Can y'all tell the people what y'all got going on right now? Any specials? You know when y'all opening? We um, the right um, here. Yeah, it's like it's like let them know what y'all got bro, going on. Basically, like what, you know what time y'all open? All that. Right. So run it all Tuesday through Thursday. We two p.m. to ten p.m. Friday, Saturday, 2 p.m. to 12 p.m., 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sunday, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. You know, we got some deals going on. Buy buy three cheese steaks, get one for free. You know, uh, OGs specifically. If you buy two OGs, you get a free crab fry. That's, the, that's what we got going on right now. Where is all this at? 2670 <laughs> East College Ave. Okay. Decatur, Georgia, 30030. Hey. And yeah. the website, soycetl.com. Sure. You can order off of there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we be dropping deals a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because, honestly, it's, it's easy to do because everybody is going through, like, you know, economy problems. Mm -hmm. So, like, like I was telling him, I'm like, bro, everybody feel like they being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They go to the grocery store. Damn. Yeah, right. No, That's for real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, for real. Damn, damn, okay. Crazy. You know, you go to, you know, you go this and everything is upcharged. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, when are we going to make people feel like they getting more than what they 
more mm-hmm. than what they bought it for, you did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I said, that's what I'm saying. The, uh, the economy slow. They don't mean people not spending. They just slow to spend with you. Mm-hmm. So how do you exactly. fast it up by them like, damn, that's, that deal crazy. Like, people away. be like, bro, you mm-hmm. are y'all making money? <laughs> yeah, we making money. Yeah, you know we what I'm saying? Sure we but, <laughs> you know, it's about reciprocation. Mm-hmm. We're not going to take from y'all and not give y'all anything. Right. right. You dig? And that, that's something I think we need, you know, we want to specify on too is like, um, we're not only about food, like we're about to do community initiatives, we're about to create scholarships, you know, mm. we about to really tap into, but you know, I think what people gotta do is give small businesses a chance to get there. Right. You can't make a change without no money. Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you gotta make right. an investment and trust that we have integrity that we're gonna circulate that investment back into the community. But mm-hmm. you can't just expect a small business right at the gate to to especially in the food industry that don't yeah. got that got small profit margins right. to make a true difference. But since we've been doing it two years, going on uh, three years, and people have been investing, okay, now now we at a point where we can, you know, keep leveling it up and mm-hmm. do bigger and bigger things. So mm-hmm. I think that's important too. For sure. Uh, yeah, For sure. I think you hit the nail on the head. For sure. Can you tell the people where they can find you on Instagram, all social media, handles, all that? I'm just on Instagram at uh, Don Ross Jr., D O N R A L L S J R, and I think my TikTok is that too. I think I just created TikTok. I got like twenty five followers. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Follow, my man, man. <laughs> you know Follow my man, man. Follow my man. Follow my TikTok. Yeah. I'm on Instagram at sweet dot proctor s w e e dot proctor p r o c t o r. You can find me at. And where can they find so icy on TikTok and Instagram? Yeah, just so icy a t l s o i c e y a t l. We on Facebook. About to create a YouTube. Mm-hmm. So we about to, you know what I'm saying? About to tap but on everything, so ICATL and the website is soicatl.com too. Okay. Like I said before, thank you guys. I really mm-hmm. appreciate it. We done? I, th- yeah. I was just getting warmed up. <laughs> right. I'm about to say it's already over with. We just yeah, get man. Like, ah, <laughs> I appreciate you for sure. This is fun. Yeah, this nah, is fun. I appreciate y'all coming out. Um, like I said, sky's the limit for y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They ain't bring me no cheesecake, y'all. I mean, no uh, cheesesteak, cheese man. You gonna come get one? I'm coming to get one. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. What's your grind podcast by Grind Season? Also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Grind Season LLC. Yeah.